misogyny is not was not invented by Andrew Tate, right? If anything, Andrew Tate utilized misogyny to skyrocket the fame, a thing that I've mentioned many, many times over. Do you ever wonder why some people who you've never heard of before all of a sudden appear everywhere? Andrew Tate! Andrew Tate is an Anglo-American kickboxer turned influencer whose extreme misogynist videos have helped make him the most viral man in the world. Bang out the machete, boom in her face, and grip her up by the neck. Like, Shut up, bitch! On December 29th, he and his brother were arrested by Romanian police as part of a rape and human trafficking investigation. The Matrix has attacked me. A few months before their arrest, I was in Romania trying to get access to their so-called secret society, the War Room. The War Room is the most powerful network on the face of the planet today. Andrew Tate. To get inside, I had agreed to endure a professional cage fight in Romania. I know he's gonna Come lose, on, but wow, he's actually in there. Along with a hundred Tate superfans. We shouldn't be slaves, we shouldn't be working nine to five jobs. I need to grow, I need to get better, I need to evolve. I'm not tough on myself. Nobody else will be. That's what I learned from Andrew Tate. This chain hole. Hold on to What I found out. My plan was to sow anarchy. Is that this recent arrest appears to be just the tip of the iceberg. This is definitely a hit piece. I don't signal. care. The real story. We've clearly conquered the internet. Began years ago. There's not a single female complaining. Do you think there's not a single no, no, female no. complaining? Have you seen one? Tell me. My ex-boyfriend was radicalized by Andrew Tate. He was sweet and I guess vulnerable to being brainwashed by Andrew Tate and his cult. People don't know what he's done. <laughs> If you haven't heard of Andrew Tate yet, it's only a matter of time before he pops up on your newsfeed. His videos have been viewed over 11 billion times, and in July, he was more Googled than Kim Kardashian and Donald Trump. He's been- The best part of this video is learning that Andrew Tate is a fucking court wizard at his side. Okay, well, if you're a Hasanabi head, here's what you will appreciate even further. His court wizard has also hexed me. His court wizard has tweeted about me regularly and routinely since I debated Andrew Tate, and has even, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, sent a hex my way. I have been cursed by his wizard, yes. Called the king of toxic masculinity. He has said that rape victims should, quote, bear responsibility for being raped. We're about to enter his compound in Romania, which was raided earlier this year as part of the rape and human trafficking investigation that led to his arrest in 2022. Is that true that you sequestered an American girl? It's not even pretty. This girl's average. She's ugly. I don't have time for this bullshit. What about the rape accusation? He's That's like, I only sequester pretty girls. You know, I don't actually, I don't actually sequester and and uh, kidnap uh, ugly girls. She was ugly. Of course not. not true. Hello, is this Andrew Tate's house? I'm Matt. Okay. Hey, security. hello. Just a second to have a confirmation from Mr. Tate. Okay, cool. Yeah, you just let me know when when we're allowed. Okay. Yeah? Yes. Thank you. Welcome. This is wild hello, that hello. Vice did Good this. To see you. This place is It's wild that Andrew Tate allowed Vice to do this. Okay? Like, how fucking cocky are you, man? That's crazy. Why the fuck would you ever think Vice was going to do a soft pedaled baby shit? Like, why did you think Vice was going to do a positive coverage of you? Like, the arrogance, the ego, oh my fucking lord. Giant. Yeah, I can give you a quick tour. I can't show okay. you a lot of it. A lot of it's, like, off limits. But I can show you okay. some of it. Gee, come bite them. Show them how scary you are. Is this the normal level of security you have Oh my god, that's a beautiful dog. Day, oh god. This or? is the normal level of security I have in my house every day. I am prepared for all eventualities. It's better to be paranoid. <laughs> the fucking cannon shot. I love that. They're like, I'm, I'm prepared for all eventualities. Like, like the rise of 1453. We are in Romania after all. Who knows if Fatih Sultan Mehmed might make an appearance with his cannons. We must make sure alongside Vlad Dracula Tepes to defend the sanctity and safety of Christian Europe. What the fuck are you doing, bro? What is this cannon? <laughs> I'm prepared for all eventualities. 
I kind of like cars. I can tell, yeah. This door leads to, I can't take you in there. That's classified. Up on there, I can't take you in there either. It's classified. You do, you do know if you go to any off-limit areas like security, you're going to intercept. So everything yeah. I point classified, I'm basically saying don't make them put a gun in your face. Got it. TV, which I never watch. World title belts. I was four-time kickboxing world champion. And what's this painting over here? That's my brother. Who else lives here? Is it just you? No, I live here with my brother. I think you get the best version of yourself if you live with other competitive men. I, I don't have loser friends. I like sitting down with people and discussing how we can make money from the conflict in Ukraine. That's what I enjoy. I don't want to talk about TV. Interesting, okay, cool. Hi, by the way, sorry to interrupt. I'm Matt. Georgia. Georgia, Thank good you. to meet you. What are you up to, Georgia? Oh. Working. Working. Isn't she also, she's also in jail, if I'm not mistaken, right? This is the, this is one of the, the top pimps, I think, that, am I, am I, am I mistaking it with someone else? I don't want to, like, accidentally say that. I think he was like, whoa, by the way, why did he grab him? Working. Okay. This is, uh. The woman I'm trying to speak to, Georgiana Noghel, would also later be arrested. Yeah. This was his, like, girlfriend slash assistant slash the Ghislaine Maxwell of the, of the situation. With Tate in December. Georgiana, two coffees, please. Accused of assisting him in his human trafficking operation. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Hey, how are you? What are these guys up to? Conquering the world, my friend. Through what means? I run Hustlers University, which is now currently the biggest online educational platform in the world. We've grown extremely fast. We have 110,000 students inside of a year. Hustlers University. Hustlers University. Hustlers University. For $49 a month, Andrew Tate's online Hustlers University promises to teach his millions of... Bro, motherfucker said, I'm a Discord mod. And I got my Discord mods on the job. Working hard. The secrets of modern wealth creation, from crypto <laughs> trading to drop shipping. No big deal, just the biggest online school in history. Is this a sharp sword or is it kind in of a sword? I did a Tate speech about why I have this sword. A Tate speech is like my YouTube channel, Tate Speech. Yeah, yeah. And I talked about how the number one problem with the world is that not enough men walk around their houses with swords. Mm -hmm. that, that's up there for sure. Because if more men walked around their houses with swords, so many of the world's issues could be fixed. But you have to extrapolate it. Okay. For example, so the woman panics, she sees something on TV, the man comes home, she's like, oh, you go, we gotta start wearing a mask, da, da, da. If the man walked around with a sword, and she's like, put a mask on, he'd be like, I'm brave, I don't need a mask. I'm a commander. Fuck you. It's just a simple- It's funny because it's like, the, the material possessions make the man is ever present even in this argument. He's like, yeah, I'm brave because I have a sword. Bro, are you 12? What happened? Did someone knock his head so fucking hard? Did someone, did someone knock his head so fucking aggressively that he like is permanently 12? Symbol of empowerment. You got your sword, your wife starts talking. You're like, shut up. I decide what I do. Be quiet, cook. Andrew's unashamed misogynistic and violent views so far seem to match his YouTube persona. But to find out how he's translated those into viral fame, I accept an invite onto the Tate Brothers podcast, Emergency Meeting, which is also a chance to get acquainted with his brother, Tristan. Welcome to Emergency Meeting, episode 13. We have a special guest, Matt Shea, who is uh, internationally renowned and respected. He's a folk singer, and he's going to sing us a song. Andrew's invited his mate on our show uh, without my consent. I'm just going to have to bite my tongue and listen to you guys talk most of this emergency meeting. Otherwise, I'm going to walk off. Matt, so, Matt, can you introduce yourself? Tell them about your singing career. Tell them where you're from, et cetera. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually not a folk singer at all in what? the slightest. No, sorry. What? I'm, Are you calling my brother a liar? You lied to case, me. Yes. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen the clown that hides from gay people? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen No, him? I haven't seen you the haven't. clown that hides the gay so people. So you've never seen him? No. Strange. Is he here somewhere? Strange. Well, yeah, he's right here. I see him. I see him. All right, let's be nice to our vice friend. So let me be nice to him before he does a hit piece. He's, this is definitely a hit piece. I've warned my brother that this is a setup. And this is what everyone... I don't is. care. I'm uninterested. We've I've clearly conquered the internet. I'm clearly unstoppable. I'm like the... Wah, wah. Turns out Tristan is right. Of course it's a fucking hit piece. Why the fuck did you think? Why did you fucking think that Vice was going to conduct, like... Why did you think that you were going to be able to to like overcome this especially when you've done so many awful things dude it's crazy
It doesn't make any sense to me. 77K Andy? No, he's not. That's not real. It's on Rumble. It's, on, it's not on YouTube, by the way. It's on Rumble, okay? So, bullshit. The board. You've invited the liberal news media to come. They can all life. come. Just because I'm wearing a gun, I'm violent. Is that how it is? Just because I got knives all over the table and I'm a kickboxing world champion, I'm violent. If you are wearing a gun and you have knives, that does make you a little bit violent. It makes, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It makes me security aware. I don't want to sing a song. I haven't sing said like you promised. It's you a setup. Like I won't kick Vice out of my house. I think. A few more minutes, or no, we're done with no, it. No, no, you can sing now, or you're off the pod. During an ad break, Andrew breaks character. Oh, 30 second break. Chat shit. Another five minutes, and we'll get you out. I like to break character at top of the hour ad breaks as well. And if you want to fucking see what I look like or what I sound like when I break character at the top of the hour ad break, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for fucking free. Here's the three minute ad break now. Fancy man. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Oh, here. You can talk, you can talk shit back. You can annoy us if you want. Don't worry, Miss no, Melzi, thank you for the five gifted subs. Shit. <laughs> We've had a long career. We have to do um, our normal broadcasting. Okay. Kick him off. Why hasn't Vice released his info before it feels too late? What do you mean? This is like, this is a documentary that takes a long ass fucking time to put together. If anything, they probably rushed it because Andrew Tate went to prison. This is a 45 minute piece that like required their fucking journalist to go to Romania and embed with the sex trafficker cult, okay? If anything, they literally released it earlier than they normally would have because he's in prison. It's, it's you know, this is like Vice at its best. Check top of the hour bot. Yeah, what do we get after this? 747? Yo, some of you motherfuckers are spiteful, dog. Straight up. Like, there's no way that you get... Oh, that fucking... That segue was perfect. I got a lot of haters in the chat today. I'll be honest. I got a lot of haters in the chat today. I think it's because of the issues that we're talking about and stuff. Like, there are some people who just, like, hit 0 out of 10, no matter what happens. Um, DJ Kento, thank you for the five gifted subs as well. I'm off the pod. Cool, man. Have fun, guys. Yeah? Cool. Bro, this is going to be the worst documentary about us. What they gonna What are they going to say? I don't know. He has lots of cars and money. All the women love him. He's sexist. Oh no, please don't put that on the internet. Who cares, right? Whatever. Within minutes of being on their show, the Tate content machine snaps into action. Ah, uh, Aiden, uh, yeah. Mike. Wow, already. You promised uh, to I sing to me. If you setup. think I won't kick Vice out of my house, you can sing now or you're off the phone. Tate brothers embarrass Vice reporter. Actually, I take that back. I want to make sure that my army is fighting you know, ethically and following the... 18,000 likes, 246 comments, 66 reshares. Oh, I accidentally liked it. If you had to go to war, did you call your friends? Let's see what people are saying. Tate win, as always. I'm impressed how easily he runs over weak men's arguments. It isn't Tate posting all these videos. So who are all these people? Tate Brothers Embarrassed Vice Reporter was posted by a fan account that has 58,000 followers and 3.9 million likes and is just posting loads of videos every single day. Right in the description of his account says, looking to level up your life, start here. It's a sign up link to The Hustlers University. Another account. And again, a link to The Hustlers University. He's got a- For those who say Tate's the loudest person in the room, not the smartest, yeah, no shit. But never forget, most people are incredibly dumb, okay? Myself included. So if you want to hit the majority, if you want to hit the largest, broadest fucking possible uh, audience, yeah, you got to dumb it up. You got to be dumb. What the fuck do you mean? That's what dumb people like. Dumb people like fucking loud motherfuckers who are just like, I'm dumb, but I'm confident. Clever formula here. It turns out a big part of Hustlers University is an affiliate marketing scheme where boys as young as 13 are instructed to share controversial videos of Andrew with links to the Hustlers University underneath. Lucy if someone X, signs Lucy, up for your the link, you get 48% of their subscription fee. By financially incentivizing 110,000 students to share his content online, Andrew has essentially built an army to make him rich and famous in a very short space of time. 
And he's tactically avoiding the impact of social media bans because it isn't Andrew himself posting, it's his legion of fans. All I'm doing is saying that every, the shit that everyone thinks and isn't allowed to say. So that's the reason I'm all big on the internet. I'm starting to wonder whether he's just a living meme. You're a loser because your mentality is loser. Do I believe the 110,000 number? No. Uh, I've said this before. I think his Discord was botted. Um, do I think that he had a lot of people in his MLM scheme? Uh, sure. A lot, like more than one is too much in my opinion. But no, I, I don't believe that he had 110, uh, he had 110,000 paying, $50 a month paying, uh, $50 a month paying members. No. It's because it's $50. Like if it was $5, I would believe it. But $50, I don't fucking believe it. Think about it this way, dude. XQC serves 70,000 people on average every fucking day for 13 hours. And his subscription count. Think about my subscription count. Okay? And that's $5 or free with a Twitch Prime. No. No fucking shot. No fucking shot that like 110,000 people all around the fucking uh, country were on, uh, were on Discord and... No, you're not being segued. Stop. We already did it. I already ran the top of the hour ad break. I think it was partially organic and partially uh, bots. Zerish. Some kind of viral marketing campaign to swindle money from confused young men. You never had the life I had. Or if he really believes what he says. All I am offering is the truth. It's like he's corny, he's a goober, and then also at its worst, he's a, uh, a alleged rapist and a sex trafficker, right? But outside of all of that, he does have a personality. He does have a stage presence. If I'm looking at it as like pure entertainment, and especially because like a lot of people do look at it as pure entertainment because like they don't even comprehend the impact of his words or they agree with him. You know what I mean? It's just like, uh, he, he, I can, I understand why people like it. Like I, he is, he is a showman. Well, not alleged rape. I mean, he is a rapist. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I said alleged because like, uh, you know, I don't know why I said that actually. Well, I guess that's a spoiler alert a little bit. If you're just now tuning into this documentary. Yeah, he is a perfect wrestling heel. Perfect wrestling heel. Andrew first appeared on our screens as a reality TV star. Donna Sar, thank you for the two... Th uh, <laughs> Donasar 2000, thank you for the five, get the subs. Neki Stranach, thank you for the five, I've never subs. been in this situation in my life so far in my 21 years where I really want something and didn't get it. He had found an arena where controversial personalities thrive. I have to manipulate a lot of people to win. But something happened when Andrew was on Big Brother, one of the biggest reality TV shows of all time. This is Big Brother. Due to Why events did get in the banned? outside world, Andrew has had to leave. What the fuck? What the fuck did he do now? Because he's so ugly? No, that's not why he got banned. Maybe they thought they were banning. Hold on. I'm going to text him right now and ask him. No, they thought. Maybe they thought uh, he was Andrew Tate. Too zesty. Yeah, Twitch is being kind of homophobic, to be honest. The Big Brother house. He was reportedly removed from the program when a video surfaced of him slapping his ex-girlfriend and then beating her with a belt. Hey, you stupid some of I didn't say the word listen. Did I say listen? Did I say listen? No. Did I say it? Public outrage simmered down after Andrew released a video of his ex claiming it was all part of a so-called kinky game. It was just pure game, it's just what we used to do. But what the public didn't know, and what we can now reveal, is that around the time that Andrew was playing truth or dare in the Big Brother pool, the UK police had informed the production company 
that he was under investigation for two incidents involving other women, one of rape and a further of physical assault. In May 2021, Tate made reference to his arrest in an appearance on the Fresh and Fit podcast. I was like, who are you? And they're like, you're under arrest for a suspicion of assault of this dumb hoe. And I'm like, I'm like wait, this is a dumb hoe? <laughs> they didn't, but I'm going to protect her. And I, 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 I have an enemy because I'm a nice guy. <laughs> dumb hoe. <laughs> During this same period, the Tate brothers were recruiting women for a webcam sex business and creating the first of their many online courses, teaching other men how to do the same. I am her everything. It doesn't matter if I fuck someone else because I'm her everything. She has nowhere else to go. His pimping hose degree. Dude, he did so many fucking videos like this is crazy. Like, he, he did so many videos where he was just, like, basically admitting to all of this shit. Go. It was called the Tate PhD, or Pimping Hose Degree. She was a f***ing hoe, and I spotted it instantly because she didn't humble herself when she was supposed to. And I'm glad I didn't waste any more time on her because she's never going to be doing like my other girls do, living in my house, letting me fuck other women, remaining loyal, and f***ing bringing me coffees and doing as I say. Andrew has closed down the Pimping Hose Degree to focus on the Hustlers University. Luke, your screen's compromised, yeah. So keep it super fucking vanilla. But with a historic rape allegation in the UK and the Romanian police now looking into him for rape and human trafficking, I want to find out more about his methods of recruiting women. Did you at one point say that the girls who started as your girlfriends and then worked for the webcam industry, 100% of the profit goes to you? I think in a lot of households in the world today, the man is in charge of the investments. I think that's not an uncommon thing. Tell me a view I have that you think is genuinely insulting or destructive to society. I'd like to hear it. You prefer younger women who are 18 or 19 because you can leave an imprint on them? No, when I say leave an imprint, I mean that. Oof. It's, uh, you, I, I understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say that like, if I get her, I can brainwash her. I'm not trying to say that. If you meet a girl who's- Just now realizing this motherfucker doesn't have a chin, he looks like a guppy fish. Just now you're realizing that? Brother, I guess that's how powerful, like, fucking a, a persona that you put on can be, considering that, like, considering that, like, you know, even dudes in this community are like, wait a minute, like, I, I thought he had a chin this whole time. Like, how the fuck, it, how the fuck did it take you this long to figure that out, man? I was 22 and you're her second boyfriend. She's probably like a nicer person, less jaded, less upset, less suspicious. So you like to be in a position of power. It's not being in a position of power. It's about... I enjoy to show her amazing things. You're trying to attach things to the situation which, are, which aren't. This, by the way, this argument that he made about like the purity thing was probably his most insecure. If you recall, he talked about how like he's, he's, uh, he wants to be the first to show these uh, women things and stuff like that, right? And it's like, it's, it's so, like a lot of people were, were focusing on how gross it was. Meanwhile, I was looking at something entirely different because it just basically showed how fucking insecure he is. Like, He's worried that he's worried that someone else has like shown her a better time. Like that's what he means when he talks about purity. He has he's just not a very confident person. Not realizing that like uh you know, they're with you for you and not because what you can show them. And it doesn't matter if they had experiences with someone else. They're having it with you now. Like that obviously didn't fucking work. Not true. Five years ago, you said rape is a terrible I thing. Pee, I'll be back. But if you put yourself in a position to be raped, then you should bear some responsibility for that. Okay, so first, we agree that rape is a terrible thing. Point I'm trying to make is the best way to prevent yourself from being raped is to have a degree of personal responsibility and not put yourself in positions to be raped, as opposed to standing there saying that rape shouldn't happen because, or men raise our boys better. You know what else shouldn't happen? Robbery. I want the freedom to walk down the road with a million dollars in cash. Is it fair to compare the desire to walk around with a million pounds in cash to someone wanting to just walk around their own city at night? Well, fe female beauty is extremely valuable. Of course, female beauty is extremely valuable in the eyes of men who seek to exploit it. I don't give a shit about having sex with beautiful women. I fuck them so they listen to me, so I can get what I actually want, which is not them. It's a means to an end. Every single Bond girl was exploited. That's exactly what I do. 
Have you heard the term lover boy before? The lover boy method? Yeah, romantically involving yourself with a woman and then make- Oh my God, bro, bro, what? Wait, I gotta run this back. I gotta run this back, hold on. So I can get what I actually- What did he say about the rape thing? I'm sorry, I didn't hear it because I was peeing. In the eyes of men who seek to exploit it. I don't give a shit about having sex with beautiful women. I fuck them so they listen to me. So I can get what I actually want, which is not them. It's a means to an end. Every single Bond girl was exploited. That's it. I want the freedom to walk down the road with a million dollars. To standing there saying that rape is a responsibility. Let's hear responsibility for that. Okay, so first, we agree that rape is a terrible thing. Point I'm trying to make is the best way to prevent yourself from being raped is to have a degree of personal responsibility and not put yourself in positions to be raped, as opposed to standing there saying that rape shouldn't happen because, or men raise our boys better. You know what else shouldn't happen? Robbery. I want the freedom to walk down the road with a million dollars in cash. Is it fair to compare the desire to walk around with a million pounds in cash to someone wanting to just walk around their own city at night? Well, fe female beauty is extremely valuable. Wait. Why did he just say, no, I wasn't victim blaming, rape is terrible, but also like women are responsible for it in his description of why like he wasn't victim blaming. Of course, female beauty is- well, I mean, we know why, we know why. Spoiler alert, uh, you know, and also trigger warning, but like you'll understand if you haven't seen this really documentary valuable. yet or have been here for the past fucking month that where I have covered this. In the eyes of men who seek to exploit it. I have seen this before. Yes, he's not attracted to women. Sex with beautiful women. I fuck them so they listen to me, so I can get what I actually want, which is not them. Hassan, you're Turkish. Don't act like you haven't heard these things before. Hey, dumbass! I've heard these things both in Turkey and America. What the fuck does that change about anything? What? Yeah. I don't get it. Like, does it make it automatically normal and cool when a Turkish person says it? Like, what, what, what is the argument here? It's a means to an end. Every single Bond girl was exploited. That's exactly what I do. Have you heard the term lover boy before? The lover boy method? Yeah. Romantically involving yourself with a woman and then making money off of her in some Part's sort of crazy. sex adjacent industry. Firstly, I would call the webcam industry far closer to psychology than sex. The webcam industry has prevented more male suicide than any group of therapists, any action group, any charity ever would, right? Is that true? How can you measure that? What? Well, I, it's not about measuring, it's about my personal experience. One of the concerns that people have about that okay, no, method people, is that let, it's, me, let me correct you, because I'm a professional. Is that it's similar to, or people might consider that a form of grooming. Okay, so I'm a professional, so I have to, conf, conf, I have to change what you just said. I have to at least, con, I have to at least challenge you. Oh my God, he's fucking, dude, this is it. This is it. One direct question falls apart. One direct question falls apart. He, even he is not so fucking stupid that he doesn't recognize that like what he is being questioned right now is unironically what happened and what he has done. On it. Nobody's concerned about anything that happened 10 years ago when a bunch of girls got rich. There's not a single female complaining. Do you think there's not a single no, no, female no. complaining? Have you seen one? Tell me. Andrew says no woman has complained about him personally. He won't let us speak to the women who work for him. So for now, it's difficult to verify this claim. But I have spoken to many women who complain about the effect Andrew's rhetoric is having on their lives. To protect them from harassment, I've agreed not to. Well, guess what? Uh, you know, it doesn't really... It, it, th this part of the documentary did not have additional evidence because he was not allowed to talk to the women there. But guess what? We now have additional evidence. Uh, shouts out to the D-I-I-C-O-T, okay? Because uh, their investigation has been concluded, and uh, Andrew Tate is now in jail, at least uh, waiting for a trial, for specifically that, actually, the lover boy method that he used. To name them. My ex-boyfriend was radicalized by Andrew Tate to the point of threatening to release revenge porn unless I took back what I said on social media against his sexist, you know, misogynistic views. It's like a virus, the things that he's spreading. The scariest thing is, I have no idea if the next guy I meet could be an Andrew Tate fan. As a teacher, it's definitely worrisome. There are boys who look up to him, especially those that are maybe vulnerable and 
they're sort of going to go into the real world carrying those violent views with them. I'm 14. The boys at school my age think that it's okay to say horrible things like women are man's property and they get to do what they want with them. It makes me really disappointed in my generation. Andrew's views represent a new era in modern misogyny. Start talking to some bitches and say, me and my man are fuck you. Where you can now not only talk openly about subjugating and objectifying women, but doing so actually garners millions of committed fans. Yeah. I don't believe. That's like, that's low key. That's like misogyny is not, was not invented by Andrew Tate, right? If anything, Andrew Tate utilized misogyny to skyrocket the fame. A thing that I've mentioned many, many times over. But the worst thing that happened was he got so much fucking clout out of it. And the one thing that will change people's minds in this day and age, especially young men who are already like geared towards having misogynistic takes in general is a motherfucker who is now famous off of saying that sort of shit. Because they're like, oh, this is so sick. He's like so cool. He's so famous. I will maybe be able to uh, clout farm in a similar capacity. The level that you can operate at when you're actually a G. The most hardcore of them have traveled here to Romania to join the War Room. The War Room is a fraternity. We're a brotherhood which is designed to inspire the best from our brothers. They have to have the mentality and the pedigree to survive. There's tests. And if you do them, you can stay inside. At the I know, top and, of I know Aiden Ross's band. I know. I asked them. Wealthy and powerful men who all stand to gain significantly from the expansion of his empire. This inner circle is not happy that I'm here. After our testy exchange this morning, Andrew invites me to watch him train. Have you ever boxed before? No. But it turns out he's planning on teaching me a lesson. There you go. I appear to have unintentionally walked into a situation where Andrew Tate is going to train me how to box. Punch me. Punch me. Knock out. Oh, look, you're bleeding already. It's only round one. We've only warmed up. Keep going, bro. We've got 10 more rounds. What the fuck? <laughs> this is the most psychotic way to train someone, by the way. Kind of sick, to be honest. No, dude, that is like, what the fuck? You're bullying this dude. You're like a fucking, you're, you're a champion kickboxer, dude. What the fuck? Anyone who's ever trained, anyone who's ever trained with like an actually serious professional uh, uh, fighter would literally look at this and go, that's unacceptable. That is. Oh, you meant sick in a bad way. They would never do this. Like no one, no one who's like serious about getting you interested in boxing would ever fucking do this. I mean, I've I've trained with coaches and stuff before. I've trained with like uh you know, uh, boxers before. That that's that, that's nuts. That he like punched him in the fucking head like that. That's insane, dude. The fact that he even fucking landed shots when his guard was up. Like what what the fuck are you doing? No headgear. No nothing. No. Oh, no, he said he meant sick as in cool. Let's see. I meet and get punched in the face by the inner circle of the war room. In the world Andrew is creating, not only are women to be subjugated. <laughs> Sorry, that almost felt like I got knocked out. But men defined by their capacity to inflict violence. <sighs> okay, okay. Tap out. What the fuck? You stopped. You were like, all right, yeah. pause, time out. Like, if that were having a street fight, would someone stop? No, no, so that's your reaction. I need to fight back. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Right. Bro, this is so awful. You're like stuck in a room full of fucking some of the most insecure bullies you've ever seen. And they actually know how to fucking fight. And they're basically literally saying like, no, this is, motherfucker, that's not a street fight. What are you trying to say? Are you trying to say that you're like a violent psychopath who's literally treating this like a fucking street fight? Yo, that, that shit sucks, dude. Look, listen, listen. Listen, I, like, I, I don't know. I just, I, I find this so, so awful. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it other than, like, this is just insecure as fuck. Uh, it's so awful. Like, no fucking serious, reputable boxing coach would ever fucking allow this kind of thing to happen. And a lot of dumb people will look at that and go, that's all being a man is about. That's what being a man is about. It's like, no, it's not. The fuck? You're ridiculous.
The Worm is a network where you have 10 meetings a year. The next one's going to be in the mountains of Transylvania. You could do it, but I don't know, my friend, if you're prepared. We've left Bucharest and we're driving into the Carpathian Mountains to meet Andrew and his inner circle for the War Room, which is going to involve something called the test. Thank you. That's what I was trying to say. Being a man is about literally defending those who can't defend themselves, okay? If you want to think about, like, being a man, being alpha, whatever the fuck, whatever values you associate with it, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, most people assume that you're talking about being confident and being a protector, right? The sheepdog. It's like, this is literally the exact opposite. Beating on someone who is, like, defenseless and continuously pummeling on them is the exact opposite of being a fucking man. Okay, being a man is by teaching that other man how to fight appropriately, building them up. I've made it into Andrew Tate's war room, where 100 of his biggest fans have flown in from all across the world, each paying $5,000 to have their manhood tested by the one they refer to as commander. None of us know what he has in store. I welcome you all to the test. There is a cage fighting event. And every single one of you has been paired against a professional fighter. You will fight in the cage on national television. And it's a real fight. There are two paths you can go down. You can agree to fight or you can decide that it's not for you. You have one hour to think and make a decision. That's going to be a hard no from me. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a yes just to learn a little bit more of what happened. That motherfucker doesn't understand self-defense. All martial arts teach this and practice for the real thing where they're not going to stop. Yeah, not on the first lesson, though. What kind of fucking dumb shit is this, bro? You think this is a Hollywood movie? Fuck you mean? And that's not even true, honestly. No, I don't think all martial uh, arts teach uh, self-defense in a fucking street fight. I, I think you just made that up. Every fucking, every type of fighting training, every type of fight training that happens under the umbrella of uh, MMA has, like, they never drop you into a fucking pit, okay? That's crazy. It's, it's insane. You have to learn how to defend yourself first. Happens, and then definitely pull out at some point. Does anyone have any questions to ask me? There's no training before this fight. If you've been walking through life too lazy to f train, is that your problem or my problem? I couldn't help overhearing some disagreement within the war room. I think he wants to talk to you, wink, wink. That's his wizard, by the way. That's his wizard. What the hell are you doing? What's what's? what's, what's... It's gonna be fine, bro. No. We have an ambulance. We have medics. No one get knocked out. Don't worry about it. At the center of it all was Andrew's right-hand man. Iggy Semmelweis. Here I will share with you my secrets. He's the self-proclaimed greatest hypnotist in the world. You will learn the power of hypnosis. And seemed to have an agenda that expanded beyond the warum itself into something larger and darker. This guy your is sons the best. will marry their daughters. Your daughters will marry their sons. You will create legacies. Enjoying those juicy steaks, that finer scotch, those smoother cigars. He refused to speak to us, but it's clear that he has a big role to play in whatever the War Room's real agenda is. This is the War Room of Andrew Tate. Welcome to the test. Now is decision time. You are getting in the cage to fight a professional fighter who is trained to hurt you. Anyone who is fighting, please stand up. Anyone who is not fighting, you can stay seated, and we will begin the other program. Just like that, a third of the room decides to get beaten up for Andrew Tate. What happens to the people who said no? They're doing something slightly different, describing the reasons they didn't do it, how that affects their life as a whole, whether they're gonna make any changes in the future to be more ready for opportunities. That's where honor comes from, right? From victory. One of the men who said no agrees to speak to us as long as we hide his Bro, this is an entire group of people that, like, watched Fight Club and didn't understand the point. Getting together and trying to do Fight Club without understanding the point of the movie. It's like, they, these are the guys that you're always like, oh, who's the guy who, like, watches American Psycho and thinks, like, Patrick Bateman is fucking sick? Okay? It's like all these fucking dorks, dude. Holy shit. 
face. Why did you say no? I have been in the ring before, but just sparring. But I was like, professionals and Russians, like, they, they, they guys are serious. I was just too scared. So then afterwards, I felt bad. Also, dude, imagine being a fucking pro fighter and going up against the dude with like a CPA body like this and just making them and scaring them. Professionals and Russians, like, they, they, they guys are serious. I was just like, look at this. What are you doing, dog? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, CPA body, CPAP at home. Exactly. What the fuck? My man literally has titties. Like, y you feel proud of yourself? Like, what the fuck? I was too scared. So then afterwards, I felt bad about myself. And I was angry at myself. Because it came here to be tested. Andrew Tate has obviously said a lot of kind of controversial things online. Yeah. What do you think about that? A lot of things are very controversial. But I think the bottom of his message is a very, very positive one. Because if I'm not tough on myself, nobody else will be. Nobody really cares about me if I don't care about me, right? That's what I learned from Andrew Tate. People who decided this morning and people who decided at a later date here. We have a chaperone following us. We've been- What's wrong with having tits? Nothing's wrong with having tits, but like, if you're like an actual fucking fighter who has fought in the ring, I think you're a piece of shit if you're going after a dude who's like, not even physically fit and like trying to fucking scare them. You know what I mean? That's crazy. I'm told that we're not allowed to talk to anyone. This is not about the guy with the titty. Shut the fuck up about your uh, titties, okay? What about in passing, asking people like, what single question? Let me run this by tape before we film. No other comment. Okay, all right. Would so, you be up for that? Yeah. Yeah? Our chaperone vets who we speak to and tries to heavily control our questions. What do you Show do? Show that you're not okay. some sort of right-wing extremist for this. Why did you join the war? Again? I don't want to be stagnant. I need to grow. It's just a fundamental shift in my mindset. What I think. The wildest part about this, the wildest part about this is that, yes, I know Tyson Fury has a fucking gyno. Shut up, okay? Calm your goddamn titties for a second, okay? Please. The wildest part about this is that these people have very reasonable goals, okay? On its face. It's just that, like, these are very normal goals. It, it, it's, it is. It's normal to want to better yourself. It's normal to want to make more money. It's normal to, like, uh, you know, have some financial freedom. It's normal to want to improve yourself. These are things I basically advocate for every goddamn day, okay? The issue is these are rudderless men who are looking at the worst solution to their problems, which is by, uh, you know... Uh, basically going in and paying five grand to get their shit beat up by a professional uh, fighter. Could be bad is always good. For the war room, I used to think, why is this happening to me now? What is this trying to like teach me? About Andrew Tate specifically and the things he says online, the yeah. things that get him negative publicity. Yeah. What do you think about those things? I think he's speaking the truth. Really? Yeah. Interviewing under the chaperone's supervision is proving restrictive. Yeah? No, no, no alpha craziness. He's a bit of a, he's an animal, this one. So we can't speak to anyone? Okay. Who is this mysterious chaperone anyway? Hey, man. Hey, man, how are you? Good, good, how are you? Good, man. Um, I was wondering if we could have a little chat. Yeah, sounds yeah? good. Yeah? Brought over from Dubai. Like wow. most Warham leaders, he has a sports car. Do you want to do the interview in here? Ah, uh, yeah, I don't see why not, man. And like most people with a sports car, he's keen to show it off. So, what do they call you? In these, these are the guys who look at the playground bully and literally go, I want to be like that guy. These are not the guys who have been bullied by the playground bully who go, I never want to be like that, and I want to make sure that no one else experiences what I experience. These are the guys who literally look at that and go, no, nah, how do I become the bully myself? And it's not, a, it's not surprising that they're like just fucking just so insecure. They're just so very obviously just, you know, they're so wet with insecurity. Circles, uh, sartorial or the sartorial shooter? I'm one of the guys who manages uh, organizational risk and security for the war room. So anyone with any criminal activity, maybe they are showing signs of being racist or sexist or any of these sorts of things, they're out straight away. We, we will not tolerate that. And so how do you reconcile that with some of the things that... He said, <laughs> so how is, how do you... So how, what does Andrew Tate do then? Like, because he said sexism is not tolerated? What? 
they're like, they have a Highlander approach to sexism. Where they're like, well, they can only be one sexist in every group. And obviously Oz is fucking Andrew Tate. So, uh, so that's why, you know, if you could beat his ass, uh, you can be the new Andrew Tate, the top G, if you will. But uh, other than that, no sexism. No sexism allowed. Only one sexism allowed per capita, per war room. That Andrew, for example, says on... I think they mean sexist against men. Wait, hold on. Any claims of misogyny or the fact that he's, you know, spreading hateful words, that's not the reality of who he is and that's not what the war room stands for and that's not what he stands for. There are many clips of him out there saying, I'm not a misogynist, I provide for my women, I would stand up for my women in a violent situation. Oh, what okay. do you think his detractors would say about, for example, what guys, you just said, the phrase... Guys, I, I was feeling a little conflicted about this, but this man assured me. Never mind. Um, I would say you're a fucking pussy and uh, women are property and it's not sexist to mention it. My woman, do you think that they would consider that to be misogynist? The phrase, my woman, for me, ties into the very traditional values that we have. Andrew's <laughs> well known for talking a lot about his multiple girlfriends. How does that tie into this idea of a traditional relationship? Mm -hmm. Men at certain levels can provide for multiple women. And even we can go back a uh, hundred years ago, kings, you know, wealthy men, they would support multiple families. How is that a bad thing? It's only very recently that men and women have been... My man said, kings are good. Which, you know, tells you everything you need to know. Most normal humans would be like, we shouldn't go back to a time like that. It's probably not good for like 99.9% .9 of the population. Uh, but he's like, no, it's fucking great. Also, where were the kings 100 years ago? In pretty much in, in masculine realms, in work, in career. Not that long ago, and, in, and indeed in many cultures around the world, women still have the traditional gender norms. And we believe in the war room, that's what leads to happiness. Rather than a career or like you have, mm -hmm. you know, your own agency in the world to pursue your own goals. The women who I know who are most fulfilled in life are not trying to do the things that traditionally men used to do. What about a situation where, this has just popped into my head, where I want my girlfriend who I love mm -hmm. to be a kept woman, mm -hmm. but she doesn't, she wants to pursue a career or something like that. Then find a different woman. Find Very simple. <laughs> The core belief driving the war room and what men here are seeking is a misogynist fantasy of a time when they were kings and women were subjugated. It's at the heart of what Andrew Tate is selling. Just their production value is like so odd. Like their productions are so strange. Like why did they why did they make these like porno style videos like i don't i don't get it just look at the tweets of iggy semmelweis his second in command my webcam girl is home 100 percent of the time has no time nor interest in going out she sleeps cooks cleans does her shows gives me all the money gets railed by me and our girlfriends then smiles thanks me and goes and does it again tomorrow welcome to the war room dude if you're like a 50 year old man and you say, gets railed by me and my girlfriends? Ever. Like, ever. It's over. Jail. Okay? Like, I'm not even hyper-focusing on, like, what he was talking about, about, like, sex slavery, stuff like that. But you should go to jail. I got Tater Tots DMing me on stream right now, calling me a cuck. These kids are awesome. They're watching this and thinking that, like, you know, this is good. Like, I don't understand. And you're a cuck for thinking this is bad? I mean, at least you're not cucked by the prison system in Romania. You know what I mean? That's probably a big L. Like, it is low-key a very big L to just, like, successfully evade rape charges in the UK, openly move to Romania because you think they have looser laws around rape, create a uh, sex trafficking ring, and then get owned by the Romanian authorities who you talk so much shit about over and over again. Like, here, I'll use, like, the, the LW spectrum for some of you tater tots to understand. It's a big L. Also, I mean, it is pretty obvious. It is, it is, it is, it is pretty obvious that, like, these guys would most likely be fans of Jeffrey Epstein if Jeffrey Epstein also had, like, you know, a, a TikTok following. This is the war room of Andrew Tate.
Now, it's quite possible this next story has passed some of you by, but you would be in a minority. As the war remembers and I are bused to the fight location, the world begins to talk about Andrew Tate with a new intensity. What? He is a 35-year-old influencer who's been accused of spreading rape Openly culture. Openly condones and celebrates violence against women. Hitting women. Kids are acting like the things that he's saying is like revolutionary. 11-year-old boys, they love Please Andrew Please stop Tate. looking up to Andrew Tate. He is a bad guy. With the PR crisis going on, Andrew's team are eager for some good press. So they send an extra-friendly chaperone to sell me on the benefits of the war room experience. I'm Alpha Wolf. Okay. My role is to be Alpha Wolf. <laughs> Bro, this is so unserious. How are you going to be a whole ass man, a grown ass adult, okay? And then have this motherfucker turn around and be like, I am Alpha Wolf. Like, it's over. I walk into any situation and there's a guy that looks like that, that sounds like that, that dresses like that, that seriously looks you dead in the fucking eye behind his goddamn aviators and says, I am Alpha Wolf. My job is to be Alpha Wolf. I'm like, I'm out. I'm done. No, thanks. I mean, this is literally, what was it? Is this the furry convention? What's happening? What the fuck do you mean? Okay, fair enough. Life is all about how you deal with the pain and how you move forward. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn a lot about yourself as a man. So take it, make the best out of it, mm -hmm. and grow as a man and be tough. It's so sad that, that, like, there are so many men who are suffering, okay? I admit that. I recognize that. There are so many men who are just, like, not having a good fucking time. They feel like uh, the future is bleak, okay? And the only motherfuckers that they can turn to are just, like, these podcast gurus, you know? Who are also just as insecure as they are. It's just that they, ha they, they recognize how to dupe all these, like, lonely, rudderless men. All of the men in this room seem to be taking this incredibly seriously. Vice, <laughs> Hasanabi, it's almost like it's an echo chamber, but on steroids. What's up, Vice? Nice documentary, by the way. <laughs> What's your, like, goal for the fight? Of course, I'm going to try to win. I see a lot of contenders right there who had the guts to come right here in a cage. If any one of them win one fight, is gonna win all their money, all their girls. This is the culmination of Andrew Tate's pressure cooker of male insecurity. You're a fucking bro. You are poor. I'm the only guy on this platform flying around in private jets with 27 cars living this lifestyle. Most of you are not too stupid to become rich. Are you ready? Round one. But while they come forward to gratefully take the beatings they've paid thousands of dollars for, you are here to lose a little bit of blood. Andrew Tate's future on social media is hanging in the balance. And the public backlash is spreading. If Vice didn't mention our, our debate in this, it's a wash. Okay, I'm just saying. You didn't match Shia and Vice. I'm, I'm afraid it's fucked up, okay? I'm desperate to ask him about all of this. But first, I have to get through this ridiculous situation that I've found myself in. All right, let's go. Give it up for Matt Shell. Did I say it right? Shell. That's very exciting for Now, as soon as the bell goes, Matt has passed the test. I know he's going to lose, but wow, he's actually in there. Whatever's going on behind the scenes, watching me get chased around puts a smile on Andrew's face. Texas gets stripped to the ground. And it's gonna be a ground and pound finish. That's insane. Like, bro, what the fuck? These motherfuckers are paying five grand to get concussed by like a dude who is a who's been a trained fighter for a long ass time. That's crazy, okay? Also, respect to the vice guy. Respect to Matt Shia. I mean, holy fuck, you did it. You fucking put yourself out there in that situation. It's crazy. But he wants them to get CTE so they keep following. Actually, five head. Yeah. I've never seen this motherfucker have that kind of smile. We plan to talk more about it soon, but don't tell anyone that's a secret. I don't believe you, Vice. Don't fucking lie to me. <laughs> I can't believe he 
Jackson got in there. Those who went all in on their fight came out badly. One man was knocked out and taken away on a stretcher. The inner circle had put these men through collective hardship and recreated them in Andrew Tate's image. Fighters. Come here, guys. Come on to the front. He broke his hand on your head. And you're fine. So you win. But they had also joined a movement that was widely accused of normalizing sexism in rape culture. While the men who chose to fight are paraded in front of the crowd, Andrew's team shamed those who refused. The shame hold. Hold on to it. Don't let it go. So anyone who fought, you can put your hand up. How the experience was, how it's going to change your life, and if you have anything to say to the people who didn't fight. I don't think I have any word of advice for the people that didn't do it, except that he should have, probably. He, he went to check on me, and I'm thinking, I want to go train, because I felt like I had quit, right? So yeah. that's what I want to do. Right now, I have new mountains to climb, and I'd love to get back here a year from now and go to the gym of the guy who beat the shit out of me. Didn't it feel like a movie the last few days? I feel like that's a great metaphor for life. Uh, you know, we shouldn't be slaves. We shouldn't be working nine to five jobs. We should actually make our lives into, I guess, a movie. I want to be known as. I mean, that's it. No, that that's like that's perfect. Actually, that's literally a a way to completely understand what is like the operating principle of a lot of these dudes. Okay, it's like a movie. I want my life to be like a fucking movie. As one of the best fathers in the war room, I can't look at my sons and tell them to suck it up, Buttercup, if I don't say yes to this. Yeah, makes sense. This motherfucker has kids, bro. This motherfucker has kids, bro. That's Whether or not they fought, all the men here paid $5,000 to the only real winner in this performance, Andrew Tate. For the people who want to stay and relax, there's some chicks. Don't know where they're from. Yeah, let's have fun. I hope you all enjoyed it. We're told not to film the celebrations that conclude the evening, and it's not clear exactly what goes on. But once outside the lobby, we could clearly see a room containing naked women being photographed. With Andrew's team increasingly conscious of negative publicity, Tonight could be the last chance to interview him. Do you consider the possibility that some of the things that you've said, which have been viewed 11 billion times, yeah. may lead to an attitude towards women that could be harmful? I accept that across all of that viewership, I have perhaps, possibly, maybe said one thing, or maybe two, that has upset a large range of people. Wouldn't it make sense to just apologize for some of the things you've said, acknowledge that they have caused harm, and say that you won't say those things again? No, and I'll tell you why. I'm not gonna apologize for the edits of other people. I'm not gonna apologize for the misunderstandings of other people. There's a whole bunch of clips people are making which make me look very bad. That's not good for my life. That's not good for business. The clips that portray you in a negative light also help the algorithm to make you become more famous and more viral. I'm not an expert on algorithms for social media platforms. I do not have most of them installed on my phone. I cannot control what a 15 year old Singaporean decides to do when he chops me up and calls me names. I can't control that and I wouldn't try to. There has been a lot of bad press about you. That's made some nervousness within members of the war. And why is that? Well, obviously, when people are going to continue to lie and continue to do very, very shallow, very, very fictitious investigations, people are going to lose faith in you. The media has lost all credibility because you do not try and portray the truth anymore. One thing that stands in the way of truth, for example, is when we often do documentaries, we have full access to speak to anyone we want. No, but in this documentary, we've been very closely watched yeah. by the Sartorial shooter at Alpha Wolf, m picking who we can speak to, you know, monitoring the interview. Yeah. What is it that you're worried that we're going to find out? This, this question is so low. This, this is low. It's low. We let you in. We tried to take care of you. And you're sitting here and just attacking us for three I, hours, bro. The world is asking these questions, and the viewers will be asking these questions. It's a consistent leading question, a consistent, consistent narrative. Where's the question about the good he's doing for men? Well, there's a very clear narrative. I need to leave. In the days afterwards, Tate is banned from YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram to the protest of his fans. They have shut us. Wait, was that fucking...
that was like, I think that was like Aiden Ross in at, at like one of the fucking nightclubs. I'm not even kidding. I'm us down. This is warfare against the West. For a moment, it seems the deplatforming has worked. But then he reappears on Instagram with an emoji covering his face. You're lost. You understand you're living inside of a mechanism which is designed to control you. you don't he moves to Dubai, converts to Islam, sets up a new bank entirely owned by him, and rebrands the Hustlers University as the real world. Damn, In the guy's... first month after being deplatformed, he made $11 million and got 250 million views on TikTok alone. Months later, Elon Musk reinstates his Twitter account and he gains 1 million followers in 24 hours. I have no criminal charges. There's no charges at all against me. I have not hurt any women. No women are coming forward saying Andrew hit me. Zero. Oops. Andrew maintains that he has never abused a woman. But when we get back from Romania, we finally manage to speak to some women from his past. Just say you were at the club that night, bro. Winky face. Oh yeah, totally. First of all, what if I was? But like, I would tell you if I was. Why the fuck wouldn't I tell you, dumbass? A big thing that upset me a lot was everyone saying it's a character, it's a character, it's a character, when I know it's not. I hate when motherfuckers use winky Just face. Just suddenly it's so see lame. him pop up on TikTok. Just made me really angry. <laughs> because people don't know what he's done. Amelia began seeing Andrew in 2013. Due to fear of harassment from his fans, she is withholding her real name. I always knew, even from back in the day, there was always things said bad about him, but when I'd seen him again in 2013, I thought, oh, all these rumors about him are going to be false because he's actually been really lovely. The first time I went around his house, because before it was a, like maybe three, four times we, we got on dates, we started to make out on the bed. Out of the blue, he literally just stopped what he was doing and just laid back. He said, I'm just contemplating whether I should rape you or not. Trigger warning, obviously, sexual assault. We've seen uh, this already, but... In an instant, he changed. He just jumped straight on top of me, grabbed my throat, started suffocating me, strangling me. The more I didn't want to, it made him so much more aggressive to the point where he was pinning me down, hurting me. The things he was saying to me, he was like, who do you belong to? Who do you belong to? And the more I couldn't say it, the more he'd hurt me. So I couldn't see an escape. And I, at that point, I just gave up. I just gave up. And then when it stopped, he went to the bathroom and acted as if it was normal. So I'm like, maybe I did what, did I want it? Did I not? I definitely said to him, please don't, please don't. And he told me, shut the fuck up. Definitely got strangled. I definitely didn't want it. Did he think I wanted it? When you look back, the psychological warfare you have with yourself is like you couldn't even imagine. You wouldn't know, you wouldn't understand it unless you've been through it. Can't even say the damn word. Have you since come to terms with the notion that that may not have been consensual, that that may have? I'm at the gym and a guy just came up to me to say, watching you causes brain rot, Lamau, SOS, help. I mean, they might be a fan. I say that too regularly. Have been. I know for a fact it wasn't consensual. But it's hard to use the, the word. Even though I know technically it's true, that did happen. It, 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 that is what happened to me. I still don't like vocalizing it. Amelia's method of coping with the alleged rapes was to pretend to herself that it was a normal relationship. The abuse wasn't consensual because he knew I didn't want it, which he confirms in multiple voice messages and texts to me. Am I a bad person? Because the, the more you didn't like it, the more I enjoyed it. I fucking loved how much you hated it. 
turn me on. Are you seriously so offended I strangled you a little bit? You didn't fucking pass out. In all the women I've ever slept with, not a single one has ever bitched or complained like you are bitching and complaining now. Every few months, Andrew would send me on a different number, a message to remind me of how dangerous he was. I thought I'd remind you of the caliber of man I am. I am one of the most dangerous men on this planet. No, Amelia is a fake name that they gave her. Not the real name. Scare tactics to, to make sure I wouldn't go anywhere, go to the police, wouldn't report, would always be under his control. It was always to remind me that he was there. After six months, Amelia eventually left Andrew when she says she began to fear for her own life. In 2014, she also decided to report the incident to police, who logged it. A year after, I got a phone call from a police officer from Hertfordshire Police. She said to me, we have two other girls. How does, you say, you ask a question, how does Aiden Ross see this and still like him? If you think Aiden Ross has seen this, you're out of your mind. Not saying that he wouldn't be uh, a, a fan of Andrew Tate even after this. But like most, you have to understand, for most people, they have not looked this deep into it. Okay? They just, they, they just think like, oh yeah, he says a lot of funny stuff and he's got fun, car, cool cars and I like that and I want to be like that. Why do you defend Aiden? I'm not even defending him. I'm saying he might still end up defending this. I'm saying that he, but most people don't even go to that length. It doesn't take that much. Girls that have come forward and said the exact same thing as you. Would you please be willing to come onto this investigation to make this case stronger? And without any hesitation, I said yes. And I thought, well, if there's two other girls, I'm not alone now. I'm not alone. One of those women was Sally. She was 20 when Andrew Tate approached her for webcam work. Due to fears of harassment from his fan base, she is also withholding her real name. First night that I worked for him, Andrew bought me like five bottles of wine. So I got completely drunk because I'd never done webcam work. So I was very, very nervous. Then that night, we were just sitting on the bed and Andrew punched me in my arm. I went to the bathroom and cried. It really, really hurt to have someone just hit me in the arm for no reason. I was very confused. <sighs> Sorry. <sighs> Sorry, I don't want to cry. It's OK. Um, so then when I came out of the bathroom, he was super, super nice. Like, from what I remember, Andrew didn't have any alcohol at all. It was literally just me. That night we cuddled and we ended up having sex and I was really, really drunk. That was my first night. Then it was kind of like every single night I would work. Were there any other instances where there was physical abuse? He used to, um, he used to strangle us as well. There was another time when he came into the bedroom, me and the other girl, we would sleep in the same bed with Andrew. But at this time, the girl had a partner, so she was not interested in Andrew at all. And I had gone to the shower, I came back, and I noticed he was, like, I saw him raping her. <laughs> and, um... when he threatened to beat me up in the bathroom and he said, oh, I don't give a fuck if you call the police, I'm going to beat the shit out of you. That's kind of when I knew, you know, I had to get out of there. But I stopped working for Andrew about March, April time and I went to the police shortly after that. Nothing was done, really. The other girl that he had raped, she went to the police and then that's when they arrested him and took him into custody for like two days. When um, Andrew was arrested, we were taken in for a proper interview and it kind of just got left. I would send emails asking them to update, I'd hear nothing back. 
When we reached out to Hertfordshire Police about this, they had this to say. We acknowledge that there were some delays to the investigation. This was addressed at the time and apologies were made. The decision to prosecute based on the police's evidence would be up to the... They literally blamed the victim. The Hertfordshire Police unironically turned around and said, Hey, sorry, because you were in a relationship with your uh, abusive rapist, that, uh, you know, it would further traumatize you if we took this to court and then you would lose. So we're just not even going to prosecute. We're not even going to try. The Crown Prosecution Service. Unfortunately, they turned around and just said, oh, we can't continue this case anymore. It's just insufficient evidence. You witnessed the rape occurring. Did that not count as evidence for them? No. Um, they openly said it's really, really difficult to prove rape. Very difficult. The Crown Prosecution Service said, in this case, we carefully reviewed all the evidence provided by the police regarding each complainant and... Con for the record, uh, a study was conducted internally in England that showed that in England and Wales... The CPS study conducted showed that they literally were criminally negligent in not pursuing rape charges and uh, and their mistreatment of victims was like unironically a problem. So much so that like they conducted a study on them on their own. Like cops looked at other cops basically, or at least like the government looked at the cops mishandling of rape investigations. It is crazy concluded it did not meet our legal test and there was no realistic prospect of a conviction. In the UK, only one in a hundred reported rapes result in a charge, let alone a conviction. In a statement issued via his lawyer in Romania, Tate denied the assault or rape. He said, they wanted money because I fired them. The police understood after the investigation that I am innocent and the police found messages from the girls' phones where they were talking between themselves and planning to lie about me. Sally said, the CPS sent a letter saying that one of the reasons they didn't charge Tate was because they found voice notes on our phones where we talked about whether we should tell the police that he gave us alcohol. We were talking about it because that is what happened. He used to get us drunk. They clearly didn't think a text from a man to a woman saying, I love raping you. Um, I know what I do to you is abusive and controlling. To CPS, apparently, that's not enough. Yeah, that's pretty insane. Like, literally. Most of the time, these guys are supposed to be so grossed out by sex that, like, any kind of mention of sex even, like, deserves... A lot of seriousness, right? These are like conservatives. They think like, you know, you're violating the purity of a woman every time you fuck them. So it should be done between a, uh, you know, a, a wife and a husband. But they are so fucking, I mean, that's just how it is with patriarchy. They're so, so fucking insane that even when you have text messages basically proving that you fucking raped someone, Doesn't matter. They will literally look the other way. I did the bravest thing I think I ever done in my life, which was hell. Four years of absolute hell, going through an investigation without anyone knowing, and basically have to do it alone, <laughs> was all a waste. Despite repeated requests, Tate's lawyer did not provide a response to Amelia's allegation. The person who didn't want to <clears throat> use the word to describe what happened to her is almost enough to describe how badly traumatized they are from him. The person who didn't want to use the word to describe what happened to her is almost enough to describe how badly traumatized she was by it. Yeah. Allegations. The Romanian investigation into Andrew Tate and his brother finally led to an arrest on the 29th of December. The Matrix has attacked me. Police accused them of using the lover boy method to traffic at least six women into a Romania-based webcam sex business. But we now know similar allegations have dogged Tate for years. His followers are obsessed with the idea that the Matrix is conspiring against him. But if anyone in the story is the victim of a conspiracy, is it the multi-millionaire celebrity? Or is it the women who claim they were abandoned by the system. You know, you see all these young men talking about how he's such a great guy and 
He's their idol and stuff, and that's so difficult to see. There are better role models out there. Don't be fooled by all the money. This is the biggest lie of 2023. Is that what you said? That, wait, before that guy got banned, is that what he was saying? This is the biggest lie of 2023? Really? The biggest lie is that at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break, and if you no longer want to see those ads, you can just get away without subscribing. Like, that's a lie. You have to subscribe. Stop hating. No way three women accusing he's free. If you know anything about rape, it's so easy in court. Wait, what? What? Bro, there's like literal evidence. What? That's crazy. He said rape is so easy to prosecute and charge. Like, can you imagine a world in which three women accused him and he's free? Motherfucker, we live in that world. Some of you are so stupid. It's like whenever Joe Rogan says, oh, dude, it's like unbelievable about a thing that is unbelievable because it didn't happen. Unbelievable. Yeah, dude, because it didn't happen. This, you think it's fucking insane. They basically fucking mentioned exactly how it happened. They literally openly talked about how the, the British police have systematically failed. Have systematically fucking failed in prosecuting rape charges. And you're over here going, oh, dude, that's unbelievable. That's crazy. That would never happen. Also, I don't understand what's happening. What is happening, man? What is going on? Do Andrew Tate fans like fucking hear about, you know, their daddy uh, uh, in, a, in a fucking Vice documentary and like their, their daddy's enemy watching him or something and then you come in here? Like, how do you find this? I genuinely want to fucking know. And then you, the only thing you find is basically the top of the hour ad break, which is three minutes long. Especially if you're not subscribed for $5 or for free or have gotten a gifted sub. I can't feel my legs. Oh, God, help. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. So, hey, Bozo, thank you for the five. Get the subs. Allowing 10 people to no longer see the ads. Here's the three-minute ad break now. I forgot to run it earlier. I got a 6-9 out of that one. Nice. 50K viewers on Twitch, bro. You're at the top, Lamar. I, I know, but it's still weird. Like, I mean, maybe this is, like, redeemable, I think. Maybe he thinks that, like, oh, man, you know, Obviously, if three women, uh, you know, accuse you and they have real proof, you're guilty. He just needs to possibly understand that, like, that is real, that that did happen, and that, unfortunately, the system failed women across the board. I don't know. And the nice cars and all the women working on yourself and becoming a better man and better mindset. Yeah, but real men don't lay their hands on women. Bro, I love your take, but banning the guy. Oh. I love your takes, but banning the guy instead of lecturing him and giving him a chance to reprocess the situation is kind of unfair. Okay. You might be new here, so you don't know. So I'll chalk it up to that. Okay, look, look at the look at the rest of the chat. Look at the rest of the chat. The chat wants me to ban you too. I'm going to go ahead and assume that even though you've been following since 2020, that you don't come in here and participate enough. And that's why you don't know. A lot of those people are not, I mean, I'll unban them right now to prove the point if you want. But the reality is like, a lot of those people just come in here just to fuck around and just say like the most insane moronic shit. Yeah, defending rape and saying how free it is is not something we want in this chat, let alone Earth. Exactly. Here's the thing. That's not the kind of attitude I want in my community. And when you get banned, that doesn't actually mean that you're gone forever. You're not, like, banished to the fucking shadow realm, no matter how much I would want that for certain chatters. You just can't talk. 
So you can still be in here and listen. You just can't fucking do this. Some channels at this level will never look at their chat. Some channels at this level, some Twitch channels at this uh, uh, level will oftentimes do subscription only chat. You know what I mean? I allow everyone to talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> Take a week off for that joke. How about that? 17 month subscriber. Dumbass.